Hello, this is John Spielman with a roundup, a summary of the ninth round of the Sinkfield Cup, the seventh Sinkfield Cup in St. Louis, Missouri. It's been a tremendous round of chess with um, heavy bloodshed. Two of the games ended decisively, and there might have been more. Um, I'm going to concentrate mainly on one of the decisive games, Ding Liaren against Fabiana Caruana, and on the battle between Visvanathan Anand and Shakriya Mamadiarov, where Mamadiarov managed to hold on for a draw. The other decisive game, Wesley So against Ian Nepomnishi, went to some enormous number of moves. 132 moves, excuse me. And um, well done, Nepomnishi, for winning the game, but um, it's a bit much for here. Giri against Karyakin was a complicated battle where Karyakin managed to equalise in the end. Aronian Carson. Aronian didn't play especially well. Carson couldn't quite take advantage. Carson is having it very, finding it very hard here. Ended in a draw. And Vashi Lagrave against Nakamura. Vashi got a clear advantage, but Nakamura defended himself well and it ended in a draw. So these are the two decisive games. And we'll start with the... Big game of the round between two of the five leaders. I think there were five leaders before the round. Ding and Caruana. Somebody was asking me today who I thought was the favourites, and I thought about it. I didn't really know. Um, let's turn this um, engine off. But, um, in fact, um, when I thought about it, I thought that if either of these guys won their game, they would be the favourite. And Ding is now, I think, favourite to win the tournament. Though Nupo is also playing very well. So this was yet another Bishbeth for Queen's Gambit declined. And they've been doing this a lot recently, these boys. And Black has started going Bishbeth 6. Take, take, Queen e2, Queen c8, castles, Queen b7. It's, I mean, it's just a position. Um, and I think... An engine probably thinks it's a tiny bit better for white. You've got some assessments there, which I don't care about very much. But it went, he went a3, c5, knight b5. Basically, white's trying to use this square or this square before black's developed. If black can get fully developed, he ought to be absolutely fine. But as we'll see, Ding managed to keep things going even then. This is a nice move. Played knight d5. If takes, takes, well, knight takes, you can just go rook a7. And bishop takes, one move you can play is queen a2, knight b8, bishop d6, a5, and just take the exchange. And, well, if this pawn were an a6, this would be a very unclear position, because black would have real passed pawns. With the knight pretty stable on b5, it's clear that white has the advantage here, though it wouldn't be easy to win this game, or it might not be. Anyway, none of that happened. He went knight d5. He takes c5. Oh, the engine doesn't like this. It thinks that bishop d6 was a better move, does it? I hadn't even seen this line. This is... Um, let's, oh, bishop d6... This doesn't look much to me. Um, th that's just an engine line, which I hadn't seen, actually. I thought knight d5 looked normal. There are lots and lots of lines with discoveries now, obviously, because the rook is opposite the queen. But um, also, equally, there are lines with knight c3, forking these, this queen and rook. And... Caruana found an excellent move, rook c6. Um, somebody on the stream, I've got some very strong players now on the stream, found the move bishop d6. I think it was probably um, a strong continental player who goes under the name of I am nobody really. Um, this is actually a possible move, I think. And it ends about equal, allegedly. Okay, he, he played some moves. He played bishop b5 which prepares to defend this square backwards. Well, it's possible to play knight takes b5, but not terribly good. Takes, knight, 
takes takes queen takes 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 and a5 gives white a clear advantage i mean you wonder whether there's some way to use um the bat rank but there doesn't seem to be well white's better here um and so he played a sensible move he just played bishop takes Well, I thought this was going to end up as equal, but Ding is just fantastic in these positions. Plays a5, and doubles his rooks. Guy gets luft, white gets luft, rook to there, knight e5. So he's stomping around towards c6. And basically white claims that because his a-pawn is further up the board, if anybody's got the advantage, it's him. Fair enough, I suppose. Oh, we wondered about knight b8 in the stream. It's a very stupid move, I think. Probably go here, if nothing else. Um, oh, that's right. We had the stupid line, knight b8, rook d2, knight takes rook, rook takes queen, check here, knight to here, check, with a perpetual check. Pretty silly line, but, well, all right. If that's what you like, um, I do like lines like that myself. But of course nothing like that happened. He got an a6. So now the the a7 pawn is weak, but so is the a6 pawn. Um, I think queen a5 is a good move. White's got um, pressure because he's attacking f7, basically. And it's getting very, very sharp now. Um, queen a5 is possible because knight c4... Um, can you just play rook takes rook takes rook? Yes. You can just take. It's terrible because of this. And black is much better. Um, so you can't do that. So Ding played f4. The thing about him, he's a fantastic calculator and he doesn't back down. He just looks at the variations and thinks, all right, I can do this. Not sure if that was a terribly good idea, actually. He went back now. Um, I'm trying to remember. Let me just check my notes. Um, no, I haven't got anything in particular here. That blocks. That stops Queen A8, which is pretty important, because if you got Queen A8, you'd be teeing up to checkmate on that square. Um, King H7 was okay, I think. Um, when he played rook 2 to d5, queen a6 would have lost to queen a8. Queen a5. If queen b6, this just wins. It's funny, it looks as though there ought to be some tactic, something, but actually um, rook takes... you're just attacking everything. So he goes queen a5. And now there is the move, um, I think, rook to here is a very strong move, isn't it? And everything gets blown to pieces. And there is a catastrophe total on, um, what was this move? What are we talking about? Sorry, queen to there. Maybe you can go takes, takes, rook c8 and and get a pretty good position because you get a knight f7. I don't know, actually. Um, it's so complicated, I got very confused here. Um, what actually happened was um, he went king h2, rook, rook to there, king h2. Now black wins a pawn. But white has a big initiative because his knight's in the better square. Rook a8. Apparently rook a8 may not have been the best move. Um, rook, rook f8. Knight d7. This is a line. Knight takes, rook takes. Check here. Take. And queen b7 is a way to draw this position. Queen takes, rook takes, rook to there. Rook to there, and you should draw as black. Um, 
Okay. So that's possible. He played rook a8, which is a very, very crafty move. And the idea is to induce queen b7, which happened, and now you go rook f8, and now you don't have knight d7. But there is one move here, it's incredible, it's queen b4, to force this rook to take so the knight doesn't take, and now queen b1. And the great engine itself tells us that this is a draw, um, where move rook... Up. So... Let me just get this up. Very complicated position. Queen b4 I think is probably two exclams. Rook takes a7. Or rook d1. And the main line goes here, here, here. Queen, which threatens h5. King here, check. With a draw, apparently. Um, you can't, by the way, in that position, you can't go knight e4 check because of chompity, chompity, chompity. With an accident. So that apparently was what you should have done. Very, very difficult to see. He played rook b5. He probably was pretty happy. But Ding bashed out the fantastic move queen f1, which goes in this square and attacks the rook and now you're now this pawn is doomed and very bad things happen to the guy he went queen d5 knight takes pawn so you're probably threatening rook checks and knight e5 check and g4 check and queen f3 mate so if the guy say went here which is not very sensible check Uh, whilst the rook on the rook wasn't on the seventh seventh rank, I don't know if you could have tried to pin him, but it's still presumably completely lost for one reason or another. Anyway, he didn't do that. He played knight d7. This is very clever, but you just play queen b7, and now because of the weakness of Black's king side, White is winning, or sort of winning. He went queen c2. He should really have tried this, I think. Take, check. And, okay, white's winning. But with this passed pawn, knights are very bad against passed pawns, and he would have had a chance. You can see why he didn't do it, anyway. Now there's check and knight to there. Queen c3 defends. e4 attacks. Queen d7. Don't want to go e5 yet. King will go to f5. Well, you're threatening a sort of, I don't know, queen f7 and knight f6 check, I should think. Much better to go to d7 than f7. We're told that, um, actually, it would also win to play queen d7. It's very complicated. It goes check, here, check, here. Sorry, he went queen d7. If he goes queen f7... Then there's this line, check, takes, check, here, check, takes, takes. Um, now, you, now if you go to h5, you queen with check. Now apparently if you go e6, e7, e8, he goes queen checks, queen to there check, and queen takes knight, but you go f6. And in this line, check here, check, takes, check here, check, and white wins. But of course he didn't want to do any of this. This is terribly, terribly complicated. He went queen d7, which is a much better square. Now knight f3 check, you can just take, and nothing really happens. So Caruana had to run, but Ding remained admirably calm and just played e6. And now, somehow that's not not maybe that, that easy a thing to see, because you're you're looking for all these forcing lines. But just this simply wins. I mean, you're going to play e7 and e8. 
and he resigned. Fantastic game by Ding Liren. OK, I'm going to show you very quickly the game between Anand and Mamadiarov, and then I'm going to give the scores, and then I'm going to go to bed, actually, it being one o'clock in the morning. Well, setting going to start flobbering, which is collapsing in a heap. This doesn't look so scary, but there's this beautiful move, which I missed in the commentary, which stops knight g6. It's, it's a real, real problem for black now, because he can't get his natural moves in. He has to play queen d6, knight to there, attacking this pawn, bishop c7 is a very disgusting move. If you go there, um, well it's possible, you can already do this and this. I don't know if knight f4 might be just about okay in this position, but pawn takes here would already be the end of the game. So awful things can happen very, very easily. Um, he went bishop c7, knight h4, and actually engines want to play g5 in this position, I think g5, rook d1, queen f6, knight f3, queen g6. But Mamadiarov got, has got some sacrifice to pawn to get some pieces out, which is a very human decision. And he's got good pieces. You don't want to swap white squid bishops yet. Now, basically, Anan now is trying to fight for control of the e4 square. As long as he can keep control, he's threatening queen c4 check, by the way. That's a good idea. I thought he might go takes, queen takes, queen f6, but I think there was some reasonable way to, to play, to keep control. So Anand is groveling around, keeping control. Excellent move. You, you have to just keep on hacking here. Have to open lines for all your pieces. Well, um, he played queen takes. If bishop takes, knight takes g3, takes, queen takes, looks extremely scary. I believe that my glorious engine tells me that actually white is better. But I mean, that's absolutely not obvious in a game. Take, 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 uh, bishop b3, that's to stop some a check and a bishop on that diagonal, rook e5. You can also you can also try queen checks king here take but the engines aren't very convinced rook f4 is probably the best move to start here because rook f4 takes takes rook d1 check here check here check oh sorry excuse me that a beautiful mouse slip check here and the engine basically isn't at all impressed and says, what are you doing, you blithering idiot, you're a whole exchange down. But I mean, in a game, it's really hard to tell. So that's a good move. So now if the queen moves somewhere to c4, he'll play knight g3, it'll be even more dangerous. And now we've had a transformation and white's got very bad white squares now and very weak king. It didn't like that move, the engine. Knight d4 apparently is a good move here. Uh, it's one good move, I think. Um, not, not, not particularly. I think you can play queen takes d4, queen takes d4, rook takes queen back, bishop b5. But, okay, it, it's, it's not gone well for white in this case. Um, in fact, Mamadiarov went a5, which wasn't particularly good. I think queen c5 is a better move, in fact. And now he made a draw. So, excellent defence by Mamadiarov, who defended himself under a lot of pressure. Right, so, there are two more rounds. I'm going to be doing... I'm having a rest tomorrow... But I will be doing the final round at um, twitch.tv forward slash John Spielman from 
6 o'clock um, Greenwich Mean Time or whatever standard time you call it, Universal um, something time, is it UCT? Um, I will be doing that on Wednesday, but I'm not doing anything tomorrow. Um, and it's a fantastic tournament. I'm just going to get the scores after this round. After this round, Ding has 5.5 out of 9, and Nipo has 5.5 out of 9. Anand and Kariakin have 5. Anand just doesn't seem to be able to win a second game after winning... Did he win fairly early on against Nipo, I think? M um, Magnus has drawn all his games. So is Mamadiarov. Caruana won, won a game against Aronian, but has just lost a game to Ding. And everybody else is in less of four or less. So as I said, I thought before the round that the most likely outcome was that the winner of um, this game between Ding and Caruana would win the tournament. And I'll stick by that. And I'll just tell you quickly who's playing whom in the final rounds. So Ding has got games against Mamadiarov and Aronian, who's out of form, quite clearly. And Nupo has games against Geary, who's playing not very well, but very solid, and Vachier, who's out of sorts, but of course a very dangerous man. OK, I'm predicting that Ding will probably win the tournament. And I must say, the way he's playing, um, I'm just going to um, open up the live ratings. And we can see that the way he's playing, he's almost up to Caruana now, after gaining 7.3 points from the nine games in the Sinkfield Cup, whereas Caruana's lost 4.2. And Paul Magnus, he was on his maximum of 2882, but he's plotted back down to, to a mere 2868.5, which is still, you know, a superhuman rating, but he's playing like a human being in this tournament. OK, right. I hope you enjoyed the summary, um, and I'll be back on Wednesday with coverage of the final round and a final summary as well.